Good morning, children. I am Mrs. Indira Chaudhary, PGT Biology from Kendri Vidyalaya Vehicle Factory, Jabalpur. I am here with you to discuss Mendel's Laws of Inheritance from Chapter 5, Principles of Inheritance and Variation. This is the first chapter of Unit 2 and you have studied the previous unit of reproduction in flowering plants, sexual reproduction in flowering plants and sexual reproduction in human beings. Let us recap what we have studied. I have a question for you. Why does an elephant give birth to baby elephant only? This is the mother elephant and this is the baby. They are exactly alike. Look at this. This is which seed? Try to guess. Yes, this is a mango seed and this mango seed is germinating and going to give rise to a big, this is a sapling and this is from a big tree. Let us see. Now this is a big tree. This is bearing delicious mangoes. These mangoes, they will give rise to a seed. The seed will germinate, then give rise to the tree and the cycle of life goes on. This is continuity of life, which is due to reproduction. And here it gets sexual reproduction. Have a look at this family. This family is like a family of yours, Dadaji, Dadiji, Mama, Papa and grandchildren. They are looking alike, but they are not exactly similar. Children resemble the parents, but they are not exactly similar. There are variations. Why? Human knew from as early as 8000 to 1000 BC that one of the causes of variation was hidden in sexual reproduction. So sexual reproduction causes variation. What is the proof of this? That since these times man has been domesticating varieties of wild plants and animals through selective crossing and artificial selection. For example, the sahiwal, Indian cow. This sahiwal is a breed produced by process of animal breeding. Then many plants, many varieties of plants have been selected artificially by man which you have studied in 10th class by the process of artificial selection. But our ancestors knew about inheritance of characters and variations. They had very little idea about the scientific basis of these phenomena that what actually causes these variations in domesticated plants and animals. The study of these variation and inheritance started in 19th century. Many scientists gave up many theories and the most successful theory of inheritance is that of this person. Guess who is he? I yes, rightly guessed he is Gregor John Mendel. And we study genetics, what the discoveries of Mendel were studies as genetics. So what is genetics? Genetics is a branch of biology dealing with the study of inheritance of characters from parents to the progeny. Gregor John Mendel is considered as father of genetics because of his contributions to what he did. What did he do? He performed many experiments on this plant. Which plant is this? Yes, I hope you can recognize it. This is a pea plant. So Mendel performed experiments on pea plant. Mendel was an Austrian monk actually and he had a very good knowledge of uh, his um, subject in the monastery, but he had very good knowledge of horticulture, he knew the methods of hybridization, he had very good knowledge of mathematics, even he had very good knowledge of astrology. So in the monastery, he performed his experiments on this pea plant and he did this work for about 7 years. He performed an experiments on garden peas from 1856 to 1863. And he selected this garden pea because many varieties were available with observable alternate forms of a trait or a character. Pea is a self-pollinated crop and this can be easily cross-pollinated when self-pollination is prevented. How is this done? This 
is done by process of hybridization. Hybridization requires the process of emasculation and cross pollination. Cross -po after emasculation, the desired pollen grain is transferred on the desired stigma. So, Mendel knew the technique of hybridization, he knew about emasculation and cross pollination. At the end of this um, class, we are going to perform this experiment of emasculation, bagging and tagging which is a part of your practicals also and this is what Mendel did so many years ago. He studied pea plant because of the seven contrasting characters found in pea plant. What are those seven contrasting characters? You can see this is a pea plant. Many of you might have seen this pea plant in the garden. The shape of the seed can be round and wrinkled, they can be seed color can be yellow and green, flower color can be purple and white, stem length that is some plants are tall, some plants are dwarf, these are variations. The pod also had variation, it may be inflated or constricted, the pod may be green or yellow, the flowering can be axial or terminal. So these are the variations found in the seven traits and he called them the contrasting traits. Mendel performed these experiments and he put up his um, conclusions before many scientists but he was not understood well in his lifetime. He was understood well many years after his death. Let us see what he did. Uh, he performed experiments on pea plants and then he collected the large sample of data, analyzed it in his book but as I told you he was not recognized in his lifetime. His laws were rediscovered and after that the scientists understood the importance of what Mendel did. This is the monastery where Mendel worked for so many years. He was a monk, he was busy in the work of church and he was a person of high knowledge of uh, the monastery but he was a very eminent scientist. This is turned into a museum nowadays, you can go and see this museum someday when you are grown up. So this is the monastery where Mendel worked. When he took the seven pairs of contrasting characters, he declared them as dominant and recessive based on his experiment. Like if you take stem height, tall is the dominant and dwarf was the recessive. He had reasons for telling which is dominant and which is recessive. For flower color, purple is dominant, white is recessive. For seed color, yellow is dominant, green is recessive. For seed shape, round is dominant and wrinkled is recessive. While writing his experiments as a record, he put this dominant character in capital letters and recessive in small alphabets. But he took these letters in pairs and he called them factors, which a we call. plant with purple flowers and he took a plant with white flowers. So here it is a single trait and here in case of single trait, he is taking a single trait, so it is a monohybrid cross. What was the result? The result was that all the flowers he obtained were purple. So let us interpret what he did, that this is a purple flower and this is a white one. This is a white flower. And this was taken as say this is purple so he took it capital P capital P and this he took it as small p small p and this was considered as a mono hybrid cross. He called this as a mono hybrid cross. Why? Because a single trait is taken in this mono means single hybrid is for hybridization. What did he do for hybridization? He emasculated this flower, removed the anther and it was converted into a female parent and he transferred the pollen grains of this plant to the stigma of this. So he used pollens for this, so this was taken as the paternal parent. So this was the mother parent or the maternal parent 
and this was the paternal parent or the father parent. So, in this process of hybridization, it was represented by a small piece of this multiplication sign cross. The resultant was that he obtained all the flowers as purple. So, all these flowers were purple. He called this generation as F1 or first filial generation. This filial word was taken from the Latin which means the son. So, this is the first filial generation and the observation that all plants had purple flowers. So, in short it is called as all purple. So, this is a monohybrid cross where all purple flowers are obtained in the single hybridization. What was the next step? That the members of F1 were allowed self-pollination. Self-pollination was allowed here, self-pollination or in short we call it selfing. Let us see what happened after selfing. If this is the flower or this is the plant whose flowers are self-pollinated, so the progeny he obtained by this cross was not purple as the now this was taken as this was taken as for self pollination so in the process of self pollination this flower has the pistil which is the female parent and this flower only has the pollen grains and the pollen grains of the same flower were transferred to the stigma so this was the process of self pollination so we called it selfing and as the result of this selfing, whatever seeds were obtained, he sowed the seeds and say number of seeds he sowed were 1000. So, 75 percent of the plant had purple flowers and only 25 percent had white flowers. So, he observed that these flowers are 75 percent in the population and these are 25 percent. Let us take one more example that is the example of a tall plant and a dwarf plant. Now this is also a mono hybrid cross. This is a mono hybrid cross. This is the most commonly taken cross mono hybrid cross. Now, this was represented as capital T, capital T. This capital T meant that it was a pure tall plant. This pure word was applied because Mendel did pure line selection. It means he allowed this plant before this experiment to undergo self-pollination for several generations. That is called the pure line selection. So, this pure line selection was done for this also, it was done for this also. So, this was termed as pure dwarf. So, this was pure tall, pure dwarf. The technical term we use here nowadays is this is homozygous tall and this is also homozygous dwarf. So, this is homozygous dwarf and this is homozygous tall. Now, these were the parents. If these parents are crossed, Mendel had a concept that these parents produced gametes. So, it is capital T, capital T here. So, the gamete produced is all will be capital T. So, we write only one capital T. These are the gametes. It is capital T in case of this parent. This can be a uh, maternal parent and this can be a paternal parent. This was taken as that since it has capital T, capital T, the gametes will have a single T. This T word was called factors by Mendel. So, here the gametes have a single factor and the parent has double factors, the pairs of factors. So, this was the concept given by Mendel that parents have two factors here, two alleles here and the gamete has a single allele. We will 
define the allele and the genes just after this after fusion these two gametes fused so this was fertilization by the process of fertilization these gametes fused and what was produced was capital T and the plant was yes as you can see it is looking tall when we say it is looking tall this means it is the external appearance so this is the phenotype the phenotype of this plant was tall but Mendel said that it had both the characters one character is for tallness and one character is for dwarfness but the plant is looking tall it so Mendel uh, gave the concept that some character is hidden the parents here the parents one is tall one is dwarf but some character of the dwarfness is hidden then this plant was allowed self-pollination and what happened after self-pollination this was the parent this is the same plant actually say this is the stigma and this is the anther so the term we use here is the genotype of anther is capital T small t and the genotype of the stigma is capital T small t and there was a process of transfer of pollen grains so it was selfie self pollination if these are considered as the parents what will be the gametes let us see which factors will be received by the gametes Mendel had a concept that gametes have a single factor so one of the gametes will be of capital T type and other will be of small t type so 50% will be capital T 50% will be small t then here in case 50% capital T and 50% small t and after fusion the result was that again 75% are tall and 25% is dwarf why how to represent this that why is this 75% tall this was given by Mendel in this cumbersome manner but Punnett square gives a clear look let us see what is a Punnett square this Punnett square was given by the scientist he was um, Reginald Punnett and he gave this concept of making a Punnett square so we can say that this is the tall plant this is the tall one this is the dwarf one then the gametes are formed here the gamete is this as we have seen previously this is fusion after this this is F1 generation and this F1 generation is after selfing this is going to give rise to two types of gamete capital T and small t capital T and small t this is a Punnett square we draw a square like this and in this this can be taken for male gametes so here capital T your small t this can be taken for the female gamete so it is capital T here and small t here now we combine these two when we combine these two this is based on probability Mendel had a good knowledge of probability so one of the combination is that this T will combine with this T and other combination is this T will combine with this T. So this is the possibility that this T will form a combination with this T. Small T will form a combination with either the tall or this T or this will form a combination with this T. So these are the imaginary lines we can draw and they are not to be drawn actually just as for the concept. So the total combinations, the total combinations are 4 or the total probability is 4 that 
two gametes of each parent can combine in four ways four possible ways maximum is four possible ways there are no other combinations than this so punnett square gives us a very clear cut idea of this probability that what will be the total combinations it is not that four plants are formed that total combination the probability is that four maximum combinations can be formed and from this data during his analysis of data as i told you he had a very good knowledge of maths during his analysis of data for the first time statistical analysis and mathematical logic was applied in biology and so many years ago when he gave his concept with mathematics and statistics that was one of the reasons the scientists could not interpret what he is saying and he could not appreciate his work in his lifetime they were rediscovered many years after his death these were the data actually taken by mendel that for f2 generation purple flowers dominant character was 705 recessive was 224 the ratio was approximately 3.15 to 1 so it is 3 almost 3 is to 1 here it is almost 3 is to 1 in every case you can see that it is near to 3 is to 1 because this is the actual data collected by mendel here he counted the seeds here he counted the seeds he counted the pods here here he counted the pods then he counted the flowers having the position of this and here he counted the plants how many were tall and how many were dwarf here this is how mendel obtained this data for his experiments of which cross it is a mono hybrid cross this is for all mono hybrid cross for seven characters based on his observations mendel proposed that something was being stably passed down unchanged from parents to offspring through the gametes over several generation he called these things as factors and today we call them as genes so what are capital t capital t small t small t they are pairs of factors so parent has pairs of factors and gametes have a single factor so these factors nowadays we call them genes so how do we def define genes you have studying you have studied about genes in 9th class 10th class 11th class so gene is a segment of dna responsible for a particular character or trait these genes contain information that is required to express a particular trait trait in an organism and gene codes gene which code for a pair of contrasting trait are known as alleles they are slightly different forms of the same genes so when we say capital t or small t these are alleles this is the these are actually the part of a gene this is for height so we say that it is the gene of height which is existing in two alleles these are two alleles we use alphabetical symbol for each gene it can be capital t round means r is for round small r is for wrinkled then yellow will be for uh, yellow y will be for yellow and small y will be for green so these are the alleles these are the alleles of the shape of the seed these are the alleles for the color of the seed so this is the concept of alleles and genes this is how the probability is shown that the probability of getting capital y is 50% and getting small y is 50% here so this combination of capital y capital y will be 1 by 4 capital y small y will be 1 by 4 this will be 1 why because if this is y here this is small y here let us denote it as a small one this as a big one this as a small one so 
capital Y capital Y out of total 4 combination 1, 2, 3 and 4. Out of total 4 combination capital Y capital Y is 1 by 4. Then capital Y small y 1, 2. So, it is 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 is equals to 2 by 4. This will be 2 by 4. Then small y, if small y, the combination is only 1 out of 4, so 1 fourth. So, here when we say that capital Y, capital Y, this is a yellow seed and total capital Y, capital I, Y are 1 by 4, but this is actually looking yellow. And what about capital Y small y? This is also looking yellow. It is 2 by 4. So, total it is 1 by 4 plus 2 by 4. So, it is 3 by 4. And what about the green? Green is 1 by 4. So, what is the phenotypic ratio here? The ratio is 3 is to 3 by 4 is to 1 by 4 is equals to 3 is to 1. So, what Mendel said that it was the 75 percent population of dominant character. So, that was called as phenotypic ratio. Phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1, but if we take the genotypic ratio, genotypic ratio let us pick out genotypic ratio this will be pure yellow. So, it is 1 by 4, then this is hybrid yellow, this will be 2 by 4 and this will be pure green, this will be 1 by 4. So, the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. So, here in this we can see that this term is for homozygous yellow this is for heterozygous yellow, this is for homozygous green. So, genotypic ratio of homozygous yellow, heterozygous yellow and green is 1 is to 2 is to 1 and the phenotypic ratio of only yellow and green is 3 is to 1. Let us recap, what is the genotype here? Yes, the question is what will be the genotype? The genotype can be capital T, capital T or it can be capital T, small t. Here in this case, it can be either capital P, capital P or it can be capital P, small. So, by external appearance, you cannot say surely that this is a purple flower or this is a tall plant which is homozygous or heterozygous. So, you cannot tell by appearance only whether it is homozygous tall or it is heterozygous tall. This is homozygous purple or heterozygous purple. Mendel gave an experimental proof that how can we say it is homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant. To find out something we have a test. So, Mendel also had a test, but he made crosses. So, it was a test cross. Mendel made a test cross. In this test cross, heterozygous or homozygous. So, what is a test cross? Test cross is to determine the genotype of tall plant of F2. Mendel crossed the tall plant from F2 with recessive plant that is dwarf. So, if it is tall, it is to be crossed with dwarf or any dominant. In a typical test cross in organism, P plants here showing a dominant phenotype, whatever the dominant phenotype is, whether it is homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant, whose genotype is to be determined is crossed with the recessive parent instead of self crossing. Let us perform the cross. In this case here, let the plant be capital T, capital T that is homozygous tall, homozygous dominant. This is heterozygous dominant. So, when we are performing a test cross, what we are going to do? 
that we are crossing with recessive. So, which is the recessive of this? This is the recessive. What is the phenotype? The phenotype is dwarf. So, we are crossing this is cross 1 and this is cross 2. These are the parents here. These are the parents that is this is the male parent or uh, say it can be female also here. This is a male parent here. This is the female parent and this is the male parent. Now the cross is being performed. This is parent. So what will be the gametes? Gametes here. Yeah. The gamete is only of one type. Here also the gamete is only of one type. Here the gametes will be two types. Capital T and small t. Here it will be of only one type. So these are the gametes. Here we don't need a Punnett square, we can directly do this is fusion, and when we fuse these two, we get capital T and small t. Only one type, these are all tall. Here let us have a Punnett square. We can have only T here, we can have capital T here, small t here. So it is capital T small t, small t and small t. This is tall and this is dwarf. Total combinations are 2. So, what is the ratio of tall? 1 by 2. The ratio of dwarf? 1 by 2. So, what is the ratio of tall is to dwarf? Tall is to dwarf. The ratio is 1 by 2 is 2, 1 by 2, 2, 2 cancel, it is 1 is to 1. What is the ratio here? All tall. What is the ratio here? 1 is to 1. This means that if you get a ratio of 1 is to 1, the genotype of this plant is heterozygous. If you get all tall, 100 percent tall, then the genotype is homozygous. If one, by 1 is to 1 means 50 percent, 50 percent tall and 50 percent dwarf that means it is heterozygous dominant and 100 percent it is homozygous dominant. Let us have a look at this cross again this is for it is for purple this or this. So, let us apply the test cross. It is with homozygous recessive, homozygous recessive. This is the checkerboard here or we can call it the Punnett square here, the Punnett square here. Here all of springs are purple, but here half are white. So, here the ratio is 1 is to 1 or 50 percent, 50 percent. Here it is all 100 percent. It is, you remember it by marks. If you get 100 percent marks, it is homozygous dominant. If you get 50 percent marks, it is heterozygous dominant. Let us compare it with the, cro uh, the ratio of uh, monohybrid cross. What is the ratio of monohybrid cross? It is 3 is to 1. This is for F2 generation. Now, on the basis of these, Mendel derived his laws. Let us look at this again. Here, this is F2, this is F1 phenotype. This F1 phenotype has two alleles, one is recessive and one is dominant. This we are saying, but Mendel proved it with the test cross that this has two alleles and one allele is dominating other, tallness is dominating dwarfness. So, this gave rise to first law that is law of dominance. So, Mendel proposed the first law of his experiments that is law of dominance. Here what is important is character or characters are controlled by discrete units called factors. What do we call them today? Genes. Now, the factors occurs in pairs and the dissimilar factor 
one member of the pair dominates and the other is suppressed so we call it recessive this is law of dominance second law he derived was law of segregation what does segregation word mean segregation is to separate segregation is the word opposite to aggregation aggregate is to come together segregate is to go away so this law is based on the fact that alleles do not show any blending and that both the characters are recovered as such in F2 generation though one of these is not seen in the F1 stage. We have seen this in all the crosses that one character is hidden during hybridization. Though the parents contain two alleles during gamete formation, the factors or alleles of a pair segregate from each other that a gamete receives only one of the two factors. We have seen in all the previous crosses that if this is the parent, the gametes will be, let us see what are the gametes. Parent has two pairs of factors or two alleles, the gamete gets a single one. So, gamete will have either this or the gamete will have either this. Now, here it is plant. So, the pollen grains, the pollen grains they will have T, either T or this small t. Some pollen grains will have capital T, some will have small t. Pollen grains cannot have both capital T and small t together. This is not for gametes. Gametes will have a single allele. This was law of segregation. Then the third law, law of independent assortment. This is different from the monohybrid cross because as the law states that when two pairs of traits, till now we have seen one pair, but here two pairs of traits are combined in a hybrid, segregation of one pair of characters is independent of the other pair of characters. So, what we require here is two pairs of traits. So, when we take two pairs for two, we can use the term di and we can use the term hybrid. So, what is required for this is a dihybrid cross. How can we perform a dihybrid cross? We have to take two traits together. Let us take traits of seeds. Seeds of which plant? Mendel has used it. We are studying that P. Pisum sativum. Let us see what is the experiment. This is a dihybrid cross. This uh, you can look at the seeds. Uh, you have eaten pea seeds, na? Matter ki sabji khai hai. So these are the uh, seeds. What is the color? The color is yellow here, and what is the texture? It is round. So let us say that seeds are round and yellow. Here the seeds are green and wrinkled. Now this is a dihybrid cross. So we have R, R, Y, Y. Here we can have R, R, capital Y, capital Y. This is a dihybrid cross and here is again the process of hybridization, emasculation and transfer of pollen grain. Now what will be the gametes? If these are the parents, gamete will have a single double part can be reduced to half. So this is the gamete for this and the gamete for this is small r from these two and small y from these two. So, let us combine these capital capital R capital Y and small r small y. Let us combine these gametes. R we are supposed to write R with R and Y with Y. But apply law of dominance here. What is the genotype? Round. And what is the genotype here? Yellow. Yes, it is round and yellow. 
this is F1 generation. So Mendel took one C, one plant of round yellow, crossed it with pollen green of green wrinkled, and all the flowers he pollinated of the single plant, they gave the progeny round and yellow. Let us perform experiment for now this is F2 generation next step will be selfing let us see how does self pollination take place this is round and yellow say this is the pistil this is round and yellow say this is the anther this pistil will form eggs the egg or the egg cell will be of four combinations here. Again Mendel applied the knowledge of mathematics. Let us have what will be the combination with capital R. Capital R can go with either capital Y or it can go with small y. This probability. It is like the throwing of a dice. Small r can combine with either capital Y or small r can have small y. So, these are the four possible gametes in the egg cell. So, the egg can be of this type, this type, this type or this type. Here the first combination, se second combination, second combination, then third combination and the fourth combination. We need a big checkerboard. We will be doing that, but let us see what was the result. You can see the seeds are round yellow, experimentally you saw it was round yellow. Then what is this? This is green round. It is a new character. It was not in any of the parents. It is green and round. Here it is yellow it is wrinkled and yellow. Again it is a new characters and this is of course green and wrinkled. How it can be represented? It can be represented like this. This is the, and there is a slight mistake here. It is capital R, capital R. Now, this is F1 generation, then this is the Punnett square, these are 4 gametes, these are 4 gametes, these are 4 possible combinations, round and yellow, round and green, then this is wrinkled and yellow and wrinkled and green. When they were counted, this was out of what were the total combinations, total combinations were 16, so it was 9 of 16. 3 out of 16, 3 out of 16, 1 out of 16. So, the ratio becomes 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Again mathematics, 3 is to 1 whole square is equals to 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. 3 is to 1 is the cross of a monohybrid, um, it is 3 is to 1 is the ratio of a monohybrid cross and if it has uh, squared it is this. Now perform this cross in your copies, take a yellow and round seed, green and wrinkle, cross it, F1 generation, then make the gametes, find out the ratio, phenotypic ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and genotypic ratio 1 is to 2 is to 2 is to 4 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1, is to two is to one according to the genotypes. Now this is the homework for you. Now it's time for practicals. Let us perform the practice. So, first of all, you select your. So you hold the flower in its correct position, and you strip off the petals going from the base of the flower, going either side of the keel, pulling the outer petals off first. And there's the keel with all the anthers and the style inside. You just go in at the base of the keel. It's a thin 
go in at the base you're likely just to to go in without taking any of the other structures out taking a few of the anthers there you are you see the remaining anthers and the stigmatic surface in the flower still there so take off the remaining anthers there you are there's the st stigmatic surface ready to receive pollen so here's um, a flower that is just about to open so this flower is uh, the anthers will have dehissed inside so it's no use to use as a female flower if you go in pull back the outer standard and wings hold those in one hand then firmly pull the keel from the base, pull it back to expose the style which is full of pollen, acts as a paintbrush. You use that to apply the pollen, large amount of pollen there. One flower, because the male flower will be enough to do several pollinations if you get it at this stage. So the flower there is ready for tagging. I'm using these jewellers tags. The bud is quite delicate, so you want to be able to sort of hold it and lasso it carefully and draw the string around the base of that flower. Clearly only one flower, so that flower been crossed, no need to bag it, it's not going to be visited, you're not going to get pollen, pollen on it now. The information of the cross is put onto the label. Yeah, we have studied Mendel's experiment on color of flower, height of plant and color of seed, monohybrid cross, we studied the crest cross, we derived law of dominance, we derived law of segregation, we studied the details of dihybrid cross, we studied law of independent assortment and performed the practicals. Uh, now we end with this class. Thank you very much. Stay safe, stay healthy and study well at home. Thank you once again.